I get applause already, so I can go home now. <laughs> my work is done here. Well, welcome to my talk on WordPress for nonprofits. So, um, and um, yeah, so I'm from Munich, and that picture that you have on that screen, that's me from a church tower. <coughs> in the background is the Oktoberfest. So that's where the Oktoberfest is in Germany. Um, and um, yeah, Polish Systems, you can follow me on Twitter. It's a three digit Twitter handle, BPH, my initials. And um, I also have, um, uh, I founded NP Tech Projects in 2015, and we have a program it's called WP for Good. We are just started, uh, starting it up, but it's more of a piece of mind hosting. It's also Q&A online. It's, um, you can send, me, send emails in with questions there that you know that your developer that abandoned the nonprofit before uh, can't answer anymore or something like that. Yeah, so um, get in touch. Um, and that's pretty much it, yes. Um, So how many of you are consultants for nonprofits? Okay, about six or seven, yeah, yeah. And how many of you work at nonprofits and manage the website? Okay, that's the same kind of thing. Okay, that a little bit more. So um, I'm gonna uh, switch it around a bit, but I think it's um, interesting for everybody to know. Um, before we go into the nitty gritty, I want to make you aware <coughs> especially the consultants, um, just because it's nonprofit doesn't mean you need to work for free. <laughs> I have found many consultants that are nonprofits, not by design, but just kind of how it works out with the revenue. <laughs> um, and the second one is that when you talk about nonprofit websites, it's all about online fundraising. Yeah, so, and we get to that part, how, how do I come to that, that we uh, kind of need to point that out. Um, so, nonprofit organizations can be divided in a lot of different kind of categories, like a maturity level or something like that. For today, we only talk about um, technology maturity level or adoption uh, level, and the other one is size. And um, we have the, the two groups there. Uh, when we talk about um, technology adoption level, and um, why is it important to talk about that? Uh, because your solution that you have in mind for a certain problem might not feel, fit the nonprofit's need, or you kind of um, bite a little bit too, too much that you can chew. Um, so it, it's uh, really important to listen to the organizational structure, the people, the technology that they use, and the skill level. Um, when you start um, suggesting um, problem solutions because um, that kind of needs to fit it. Uh, so um, um, N10, and that's the logo of that. N10 is the first um, resource for you, um, be it nonprofit or consultant. It's the Nonprofit Technology Network. And they have published a, it's a mouthful, let me think so, the N10's Technology Staffing and Adoption Report, and it was published last year in May. Um, and they um, and the nonprofits that kind of send in the information uh, put themselves in those categories. Um, what does struggling mean? Struggling means a struggling organization, technology-wise, is it has a failing infrastructure. Uh, they spend a lot of time creating workarounds um, and have a lot of duplicate efforts. Um, and if any money is spent on technology, it's to replacement. So. Um, the uh, functioning nonprofits are the next level up, so to speak, <laughs> is they keep the, um, the lights on, um, they have basic uh, uh, systems in place, the leadership um, does technology decisions um, based on efficiency, not so much on uh, after input from consultants or from staff. That's the functioning. And then the operating nonprofit. Uh, leadership, makes, leadership makes decisions after they look at industry standards or best practices. They also um, ask the staff and consultants for input. Um, and then there is the leading organization. And the leading organization, they are innovators. Yeah? They look at um, technology being uh, an investment into their mission. And sometimes their mission is to uh, lower barriers, technology barriers. They are 
uh, and use all the new technology that's available, they are also the ones that um, are more um, susceptible to trying new stuff out, yeah, uh, testing things, uh, coming up with a, a plan, kind of uh, let's try it out, see how it works, and if it works, learn from it, and then uh, make it better. So the more agile nonprofit, pretty much. Yeah. Um, but don't get it wrong. So a small nonprofit is here qualified as with revenue under one million dollars. Yeah. But it, uh, if you're a small nonprofit, does not mean you're struggling. It does not mean, it can actually mean that you are uh, very much using technology to scale your operation without having to uh, scale um, the operation, so to speak, yeah? that you don't have to hire more staff or um, have more office or something like that. Um, and it also doesn't mean when a large organization um, has a lot of staff and a lot of technology that they're actually uh, using that technology very efficiently. Uh, so there is a, uh, you, you all kind of saw the, some of that. Um, so um, that, um, so but the question is, do nonprofits hire consultants? And in which area? Yeah? You can see this here. Can you all see the slide there? So the, um, and this is from the technology report. That's the only graphic I think that I have. Maybe I have another one. Uh, <laughs> um, so all four levels of nonprofits um, hire consultants. And it just is uh, a little bit more in the functioning, operating, and leading than in the uh, smaller ones. But they, some of them are actually hire consultants all the time yeah, or very often. So, um, and consultants is a, a bigger term in this report. It's not just web developer or um, online stuff. It's also kind of operation networking and these kind of things. Yeah. So, but, uh, so um, <coughs> as the end of this kind of section here, uh, it, it's important that you listen to the needs of your nonprofit. It's important to the problem that you solve. Um, and also to see who are the stakeholders, because we all, we might have already heard this, um, okay, we gotta have an app. Yeah, and when you have the, when you ask them, so what do you want the app to do? Well, it's on the iPhone. <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of, there's a lot of shiny object um, <laughs> uh, syndrome there, um, and it, it kind of, you need to navigate that a little bit <laughs> to kind of say, okay, is there a need for, uh, technology improvements and um, yeah, website um, changes there. <clears throat> technology, uh, in, but one, one thought is also when you have a struggling or function organization that you work with, the, a big problem is scoping a project. Uh, so if they come to you, we want to have some website work done or we want to do this um, integration with some other uh, service or something like that, um, that you are not getting as a consultant enough information. Yeah. So you as a professional would need to go in and do the discovery, what's called discovery uh, yourself. And um, of course they don't have it in the budget because they didn't even heard that word before um, in, in that um, in that uh, context, um, but there are uh, there's help out there. So local community foundation have what it's called capacity building grants. They are sometimes uh, between a um, thousand and five thousand dollars, and um, local nonprofits can apply for it. Um, with certain, of course, they have these requirements. Some of the requirements. Um, but uh, that gives you actually, and th there's actually for that part that uh, you can fund planning and scoping a project and then go out for a bid, so to speak. So as a nonprofit, go to a consultant and say, I have this project, can you help me scope it out? And then make a little project plan for that, just for that part, go to the community foundation and say, okay, we need, I don't know, $2,000 or something like that to scope a project and to plan it out. And the deliverability, uh, the deliverable about that uh, would be that you give them a, um, a specifications, an RFP pretty much, that they can then go out and bid. Yeah? 
Um, of course, that gives you also an in into that nonprofit if you haven't worked with them before, uh, in terms of trust, yeah, because you know that's so in and out. So if your bid is not totally off the charts, yeah, it's likely that you actually get it. Yeah. Um, that's the local community foundations. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I don't have a, we have an, I also run a local nonprofit technology club. Um, and we have uh, next month, uh, next, next week's actually uh, applying for grants. So, <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm putting the resources together. So, um, but let's talk about those. So that's the uh, first myth. Um, you don't have to work for free if you work for nonprofits <laughs> as a consultant. And um, they don't want you to either. But they're also not saying, um, uh, okay, if you offer it, if you offer to volunteer something, keep in mind that if you go away, are they able to continue your work? Yeah. So that it's not just a spark and then you go away and then they have to look for somebody else because they can't handle it. Yeah, so um, be careful what you kind of put yourself in there. So the second myth is when you're talking about profit websites, it's all about the money. It's all about donation from donors. So let's put this in perspective. The online giving, no, the total giving in 2016 in the United States was $380 billion. Um, of that, 72% come from individuals. That's uh, roughly 280 billion. And of uh, an online giving was 27.8 billion. Um, that's 10% of all the giving is through online. So there's a whole 90% of the individual giving that does not happen online. So that changes the perspective on how the nonprofit perceives the work on the website if it is for online donations. Um, however, um, that being said, online giving um, grow is growing fast. Nonprofits received an average of 28% more online gifts in 2017 than in 2016. 28% more. So it grows. Um, and monthly giving account for 18% of the revenue online in 2017. So it's not, it's not at the forefront. Um, who knows what's, the, what's still the, the biggest money maker is in terms of activity outreach to donors? Direct mail. Yeah. The most expensive part is still a lot of return on investment for nonprofits. It's still very much the big money maker. Yeah. Yes. Do you think that's because of an age? It has definitely to do with the generation that has done this all their lives, and that's also the generation um, that, uh, so it's the generation uh, um, older than boomers. Yeah, boomer, older boomers, and the, they call them mature. Um, I think if I have to wait that long to be called mature, I stop doing it. <laughs> Being it. One other question. Have you seen any studies that are looking at the impact of the new tax code um, and your ability, your basically no ability to pretty much? Um, I, I'm, I don't. Yeah, the, the impact part, um, I don't. Uh, but these are studies that are uh, coming out through N10 and M MR benchmarks. So um, this one actually comes from uh, a, a study that was just released in March uh, from M plus R benchmark. I have the, um, the URL on the, on the site. Yeah. So um, the growth rate is, uh, is really good yeah, for online giving. So it's definitely on the radar. Yeah. So, but there are other goals that nonprofits have on the web uh, for their websites. Yeah. Um, a, a big goal is raising awareness that the uh, organization actually exists. Uh, also about the issues that the uh, nonprofit um, cares about or the yeah or they're helping out. Uh, um, increasing donor retention 
is a little bit different than finding donors. Uh, donor retention right now, an average, is 38 percent, which is not particular. High. What is donor retention? So these are all technical terms that are not uh, website or WordPress specific. <laughs> yeah, they're nonprofit specific, and you. Uh, talking about um, uh, the language of nonprofits is really helping. Donor retention is if the um, the donors that donated this year, how many of those donate next year? Uh, and uh, if it's a first-time donor, it's only 20, I think, 28 percent retention. So it's a first-time donor in the first year, only 28 percent donated in the second year. Yeah. So a website that keeps uh, donors in, uh, uh, connected and uh, tells the story what the, what what's happening with the money that's definitely uh, high on the list of um, uh, goals for the uh, for website. Another one is uh, volunteer recruitment. Yeah. Um, no nonprofit or there are a lot of nonprofits that would not function without the volunteers. That's uh, the biggest resource that they have, and organizing volunteer management is definitely. Um, high on the list on um, helping on having an impact <laughs> on a nonprofit's uh, bottom line, um, and take fundraising online is certainly um, a, a goal. And we talked about, and we're going to talk about it a little bit further. Um, it's retrieved the donor information, recurring contributions, and also memberships, and and that's where you can also talk about conversions and this e-commerce uh, talk. And then, of course, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. There's no question there? <laughs> well, this might not be exclusive. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So Mary uh, asks, uh, says um, that <laughs> Um, her organization uh, has none of those goals, pretty much, and if they're going the wrong way. <laughs> so my question to you back is, what are the goals of the organization? We're doing almost entirely directing the people who are but I think that goes into the public awareness things. Yeah, yeah, I think so. It's a, she said, uh, organization has resources, uh, what's happening, about what's happening, where, whom to talk to. So it's a referral kind of uh, curation kind of way um, to do this. And that's um, how you actually raise public awareness that you uh, said, uh, that's a little, well, <laughs> now I need to speed up here a bit. OK, so the minimum viable product as a WordPress website for a uh, well, I say WordPress, but any website actually, is you need some pages, um, you need a subscription form for email, um, you need an email marketing, and you need a donate button. Yeah, that's a minimal viable product. Yeah, so any nonprofit, so the pages are kind of what services, what do we do, who are the people, yeah, um, can be static, and then uh, the rest is an email. Um, let's talk about a little bit about the donate button. If somebody comes to the website and um, says, oh, I want to donate, and somebody on the phone says, go to our website, blah, 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 dot org, and then click on the donate button, yeah. On this website that's on the screen now, I have a hard time to kind of locating it, because it's very busy, right? Not at the first, and my attention span is really good. Um, how about this one? Really busy, right? It's hard to see. Uh, so we're getting closer, right? Okay, so top right is a good place for a donate button. Um, and then there's another one um, that has Kill Bill. <laughs> it's about the Restoration Florida um, Everglades. And, um, and they have two uh, methods to stand out. One is on top, the donation button is in the navigation bar, but with a different color. So that's where I would actually look for it. Yeah? And the other one is on the top left side to take the action to kill the bill. But there are two um, calls to action. Um, so, and that brings you to the uh, challenges of a nonprofit website. If you work, work with a nonprofit building a website, you have a lot of stakeholders. I need to go through this. Afterwards, we have uh, time for discussion. Yeah. I get the evil idea. <laughs> so, you have plenty of stakeholders. You have the board of directors, you have the staff, you have the executive director, um, and then you have the cousin of the board. 
chairman. Um, they have no time for blogging or storytelling. And, and that last uh, point, I uh, pick up and say, okay, let's change those processes. If we go to the next level on our WordPress website, the next level is actually blogging. But they don't have time to blog. Yeah, But they have time, and you need to observe this, and if that's true, it's an assumption that I make. But they have time to post on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> there is time to spend hours on a newsletter. Yeah, and the stories told in the newsletters are fun, fabulous. Yeah, If I get a paper newsletter from a nonprofit organization, I throw it in the recycle bin. But if I get an email newsletter, I definitely scroll through that and see, okay, what, what are they up to? Can I help them with anything? So uh, if they spend that time that they create the email newsletter and rethink the process and say, okay, let's blog those stories and then use the RSS feed, which is a a syndication field, and um, MailChimp does that, um, to, uh, and have social media buttons and share it out. Yeah? Then you get actually many, many birds for the same time of, of uh, the same amount of time. Yeah? There's a training issue, there's a transition issue, but it definitely works. So this is a newsletter from a Naples press club, from the Naples press club. And they are all um, staffs from newsletters, uh, newspapers, uh, book writers, magazine writers, etc. Yeah, the first kind of few times I worked with them, there is a club of writers that doesn't write. Yeah, I didn't have anything to post on the website. Uh, so I, I kind of yeah, helped them to get into the field, okay, yeah, you need to blog on that. Yeah, and everybody was kind of, uh, blogging, yeah, it get, gets all the crazies out of the woodwork. Not the case. So um, we set up the newsletter, they blog, yeah, and then once a month we put the RSS feed together and send it out via email to the members. And um, that's the newsletter, how it looks. This is the spikes on the Google Analytics. Yeah, so it kind of dampers all the hint. Newsletter goes out, everybody goes to the website. Yeah, and so now the members can not say, I don't know that we did this, I don't know that you wrote this. Yeah, I didn't know about the new event, it was all there, and they looked at it, and all of a sudden, the, um, it was also that the local people that uh, new member recruitment went up yeah? and the status in the community about, oh, that's really something, uh, a, a club that I need to join, yeah, made it uh, really um, uh, working for them. So that's one um, thing to scale up the operation. The next one is, um, so online fundraising, getting to that, is really e-commerce. Um, and you can, yeah, the, all the best practices apply. So in, um, donors, uh, it, own, it works six times better that the donor stays on the website and donates online than going up away to another website. Yeah? So having your third party donor management system uh, integrate with WordPress is really, really important yeah? and that they stay there. Also, distraction free checkout pages is so important. Yeah? With our attention span, um, kind of failing <laughs> more and more. If I get distracted by one more link or something like that from my making my donation, I'm not hitting the button. Yeah? And this needs to happen. The button needs to be hit. Um, and the other one, um, have a clear process, frictionless, uh, seamless, and then up, um, make the upsell on the thank you page. Yeah? So upsell is um, a, <coughs> a term out of the e-commerce um, Thing. And when you, for instance, try to get a domain name at GoDaddy, you have a lot of upsell. <laughs> yeah. uh, but you can also do this in the nonprofit world where you say it doesn't have to be um, another donation, but it can be share this with your friends and have the sharing buttons there. Or do you want to make this a monthly donation? Yeah, this is the time to do it. Um, so uh, that's the. And then stay in touch, of course. Yeah, you can't just have them. So your email newsletter. Um, get that email from the donor into the email system one way or other. And then uh, the best way would have a welcome series, uh, but that requires content, and that might be a little tricky. <laughs> uh, so what's the next one? Okay. 
So uh, keep your um, donation form simple. This is a, an example from a, a I cannot um, yet convince them to go to a simple model, but don't ask those million questions. I want to get through my donation. So uh, this is much simpler. Um, on this uh, screen, you have a button on your website, donate $50, so it's already a suggested there. Hit the button and then this uh, little pop-up uh, module comes up with the Stripe information. Email, credit card, button. Yeah. That's the simplest form and that works mobile too. So that is where you want to get to. Yeah. Of course, talking them through that process um, is only, I find that say, okay, if you need to have the address because you want to send them a welcome message or a welcome kid or something like that, um, put this in the first email or in the second email. Welcome them being a donor. Second email goes out uh, six days later or something like that and says, we want to send you our welcome gift or our, um, yeah, we would need your uh, mailing address and then put it in there then. Um, and if you, yeah, there are multiple touch points that you have, you can always ask for more information. Okay, this is what you're all here for. What are the plugins? <laughs> what are the tools? Um, so the form and the stripe thing, uh, the minimal viable product that gets you very far, uh, you can do this with any form um, plugin out there that has a, a stripe connection. Uh, Caldera forms, Gravity forms, Contact forms, Ninja forms, and then the plugins. Gift WP is definitely one of the most um, sophisticated ones. Uh, gets you from small to big. Uh, pretty, you can use it uh, pretty long. It's not free. Uh, it has a free version, but I don't. It only works with PayPal. And the version that you get people from your website to PayPal and back, you lose about seventy yeah. percent. So um, you need to cash out something. Yeah, those things are not, but the Return on investment is really good. Um, and then um, there's a growing need for online uh, interaction though. Yeah. So people all of a sudden have uh, Eventbrite, uh, they use a membership site, they need BodyPress, they have event registration, and all of a sudden you have these fragmented uh, data sets. Yeah? Uh, you need your donation records, you need your volunteer records, you need your strategic partners in your list. Yeah? All of a sudden, so how many Excel spreadsheets can you handle? Yeah? Or systems can you handle. So that's when the organization grows to that level. Looking at a unified system might help you uh, to look at that. Um, so there are the data management challenges that you already know. Uh, duplication, you're not connecting. And so there is a site out there, it's called CVCRM. And CVCRM is also like WordPress, open source, and its software built by nonprofits for nonprofits has been around since 2006 um, and has about 10,000 organizations using it. Um, and organizations that are a little uh, larger actually contribute also to the code base. Yeah. Um, so this topic earlier, the person That's this problem, yeah. 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 Because but it does, it looks a little, uh, you, you all have to squint back there, <laughs> but it, it, it's built on top of WordPress. So when you think about marketing, the, uh, you go, okay, I have now the donation form, my subscription email newsletter, everything goes in different places. Here it all goes in one database. So when you pull up a record by email address or by name or something like that, and you identify the person, you have all the activities in there. You'll know which email they received, you know, um, you know uh, uh, what donations they made, you know if they were at one of your events, and you can put them in a group for your email newsletter because e it also does email marketing for you with open and click rates. Um, so you can have, a, and you can actually be very good in communication, um, preferred communication, so the pro people that are only preferred email, only phone or something like that. There, there's a lot of uh, behind it. Um, so if you want to learn more about it, um, we are putting together a resource page uh, for WordPress and CVCRM and it's at wpforgood.org slash CVCRM. Um, right now there's only a form there to put your uh, 
information in, but uh, we rolled this out. I just come back from a nonprofit technology conference where we did this. So um, next resources, they're all on the slide. I will share the slides later on uh, via Twitter. Um, every icon that you see has a link behind it um, where you can, so these are the leadership um, sources and then there are local meetups that are like WordPress meetup um, organized face-to-face uh, -face in um, several areas. Yeah. Um, so, go out. <laughs> Make the world a better place. Thank you so much. There was one here. Uh, his question was, when, when you look, uh, put the donation button on the website, does that vary from um, uh, different target audiences that you try to reach? Um, the best button is how people go to the website in heat maps. Yeah, so they did some studies when they're looking for something. Uh, but of course, that you have it on top of your page does not mean when somebody scrolls down on your long, long, long article about the homeless issues um, that you can't put a form underneath. Uh, learn that there's Gutenberg out there. Who has heard about Gutenberg? All right, that's not a whole lot. <laughs> Read up about it. But it kind of gives you a, a, a way to actually put it in the middle of your uh, content. Put a, a little form or a little button there yeah, to uh, do a call to action while they're halfway through the article or something like that. Yeah, so um, that's certainly, yeah, the more the merrier. <laughs> I say, okay. There was a question here. Oh, how long have you been doing work with nonprofits? Maybe I missed that. Since 1998, actually. Okay. Yeah, I have, um, um, I came to the United States 20 years ago, and that was, uh, I worked. Because I wasn't allowed to earn any money, to earn any money for the first four years, I was a drag along by my husband. <laughs> um, I volunteered for the local internet service provider that uh, was a nonprofit, a free net, so to speak. Yeah. Um, and uh, they always had on their mission to connect uh, um, electronically, electronically connect the community. And so I was uh, getting involved in nonprofits because I find it really fascinating. We have a similar concept in Germany, but it's not for. Um, uh, yeah, homeless or kindergarten or something like that. Yeah, because those are all uh, paid for by tax dollars. So <laughs> there is not an organization that forms around it yeah, to do these essential things. Yeah, that's a question. At the beginning of your presentation, you mentioned something about a presentation next month about uh, applying for grants. Right. Really yeah, um, it is. Um, so we will publish it um, at the South of Florida. Is a face-to-face -face meeting. Publish the resources on the Tech for Good website. So um, if you um, leave me your um, email address or something like that on the WP for Good site, then I can send you some of the resource um, that we recap afterwards. Yeah, to, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. There was another question here. Yeah. 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 Uh, so the question was, what are the preferred email uh, marketing systems? Um, so because of the RSS to email, it kind of um, takes a few email marketing providers out of the um, equation for me <coughs> because I find that's uh, one of the major uh, feature sets that helps. Um, so it's MailChimp, um, Aweber does that too, and there was another one, a campaign monitor also has RSS to email. But any email marketing provider really does this. Yeah, um, it's just not as convenient and or automatic. Um, but um, it, the the purpose is to stay in touch with your supporters, and whatever email marketing system does that is better than doing it from your Comcast email account. Right. 
Yeah, and so. also be sure to look at the pricing models yep. for several of these email providers. If you are a small nonprofit, um, MailChimp offers a fairly, well, actually free service for you to use. But do check what their pricing models are and what discounts they offer for nonprofits. Yeah, yeah. good point. Yeah. Um, MailChimp has 2,000 subscribers, and you can send them six messages a month, all of them. So um, that's a fairly good um, size uh, free, free account. And it has um, automation with it, so the email series, you can actually use the six emails from that. And it has, yeah, another question? I would just add to that that the email service provider that I use is called MailerLite, and it does all of the RSS, does the automation, and it's free, it's a subscriber base, and you can send unlimited emails. Okay, what, what's it called? MailerLite, all one word, M-A-I-L-E-R-L-I-T-E. MailerLite, okay. Yeah. But it does automation, RSS, the, the visual building would be very nice too. Okay, it's, yeah. It's a Excellent. Great nice great research. Talk to our groups about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I work for a So you use it? Okay. Right. Mailer Light. Mailer Light. Mailer Light, one word. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And uh, Deb, Deborah is tweeting it out. So if you're on Twitter. It is very convenient. Yeah. And I'll put it on the slides. Um, yeah. Yes, another question there. George, right? Yeah, George. 1999, we, we built a site for a nonprofit for 5000 15 years later, we rebuilt re it for like 30000 right? So for a large nonprofit, what would you say would be a, a range for having a site built and then the back end? In fact, that, that particular organization went from having developers outside to actually bring in developers Yeah, that's kind of from anywhere to 50,000 to 150,000, yeah. Um, it really depends on the requirements. Um, a certain, so if you use, for instance, WordPress and CVCRM together, um, you are looking at, you need, you can't do this as a, if you can do WordPress by yourself, Doing CVC or M by yourself, you definitely need a backup co consultant for that that can uh, guide you through. Yeah, so um, it's definitely something. Yeah, back end. I yeah, hosting is probably about thousand um, um, dollars a year um, now with cloud system. That's pretty the, the 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 lesser part, pretty much. Yeah. So I think we need to wrap it up. Um, it was uh, wonderful to meet you. Thank you so much for coming to this talk. And um, I'll be outside. If you have questions, I'm going to be yeah, around because I'm staying, of course, all day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.